Hello. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So let me start. Right. So uh, today we uh, we thought of uh, let me start from the scratch because last day uh, what I found that people are just beginner. So we start from the basic stuff. So these are the, some topics which we can start initially. So let me start with a very basic fundamental. What is Java? Right. Okay. So. So if uh, I ask anybody, uh, people will answer that Java is a programming language. So in fact, Java is a object oriented programming language, but that is not the exact definition we should say to someone. In fact, uh, as per my understanding, Java is a special language that is running on a platform. That platform is called J JVM. So what I can say is Java is equal to uh, Java as a object oriented programming language plus JVM plus library. Okay, so these are the three things we have to understand in Java. So whenever we say about Java, it's an object-oriented programming language that run on JVM, comes bundled with a rich set of library. Okay, so let's say we talk about the library first. If you have heard about, let's say collection is a part of the library. Okay, threads is the part of library. Okay, and we can have something, let's say swing. Okay. AWT and so on. So actually library is nothing but the ready-made code which is available in Java which you people can use is called library. And if we talk about object-oriented programming, right? Orientation. Okay, that is the very important word to understand object orientation. The object orientation actually it's a programming that revolve around the object. Let's say if we talk about anything, let's say this is me and uh, these are you the, are the participant, right? So we are on a call and we are doing discussion on Java. So basically what I can say, I'm, I'm a object and you people are a object. So basically object orientation is a subject which talk about interaction between the object how many objects are interacting with each other to create some useful results. So object orientation is a subject which talk about the interaction between the object. Definitely we have to understand what is the meaning of object, what is the meaning of the class and how they are related to each other in subsequent discussion. But right now, at least we should understand that Java is not only object oriented programming language, it's a spatial programming language which run on a uh, platform, that platform itself is called JVM, okay? I hope you heard about JVM. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. Okay. Java Virtual Machine. So what is Java Virtual Machine? If you ask me, Java Virtual Machine is just like a simulated computer. Okay. Simulated computer. Right. Let me explain you like this. If we talk about normal things, we have something that is called hardware. On the hardware, we have an operating system. Okay, so if we talk about C programming or C++ programming, if you heard about those programming, they are directly running over the operating system. Okay, so they are running directly on operating system. But if you're talking about Java, Java is a little special, right? Java do not run directly on operating system. We have a wrapper on operating system that we call JVM. Okay, so JVM is actually running as a process and my Java program if I'm writing a Java program, Java program do not directly interact with OS. Java program interact with JVM and then JVM interact with operating system and definitely operating system interact with the hardware. So now you might be thinking why JVM is there, what are the purpose of JVM, how it works, what are the various component of JVM. That we'll discuss in detail in the next uh, session. But just I'm trying to convey to you, Java is an object-oriented language that run on JVM, come bundled with the library, okay? So today our focus would be basics of object orientation uh, uh, features like object, class, inheritance, polymorphism. But in fact, even before starting that, I should tell you how to write some looping concept, how to write some procedure code, okay, how to do something that is called dry run. So even that is more important if you are very beginner. So let me start from that. Any question till now, guys? Hello. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, are you there? Yes. Yes, yes. So things are understandable. What I'm what I'm just trying to convey to you, if you know the, if you say a little bit in between, I come to know that you are still there. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what I was telling you that Java is an object-oriented language that run on JVM. 
okay and it's come bundled with library don't worry jvm and library will discuss in detail in during the session but today agenda is little bit of understanding about object oriented language features and even before that something that is called procedural features okay so let me remove all these things right now so we talk about uh, uh, these things right jdk jre and jvm so i've seen many freshers they initially uh, very much confused about the what is the job of jdk what is the job of jre and uh, what is jvm uh, okay let's let's say we talk about two machines so first of all we should know that there are two kind of machine right one is a developer machine okay one is called deployer machine so deployer machine is in fact a server where you need to deploy your project so whenever we talk about developer machine so let's say you all are developer okay so in your company there must be some person those are going to deploy your project so there are two different kind of configuration developer machine and deployer machine on developer machine we need something called jdk okay so we need something that is called jdk and on deploy machine jdk is not required in fact uh, jre is enough so now question is that what is the difference between jdk and jre okay so let me write a very simple equation for you uh, jdk i hope you know jdk stand for java development kit so jdk stand for jre plus tools okay what tools okay the tools which is used by software engineer for example if we are talking about compiler okay we are we we need to invoke java compiler like, like with a command called java c we can run a java program with the command let's say java okay we have some more command let's say java p so we have many command okay which comes bundled with tools okay for example if i am going to my cmd right let's say if we go there right so if i talk about the command like java okay java c so of course it is asking me to specify the correct uh, name of the file but java c is a command which come bundled with the tools right we have another command that is java p and there are so many other commands right so what i am trying to convey to you whenever we talk about uh, whenever we talk about jdk so jdk come bundled with what jre plus tools okay so i think we can draw a diagram uh, which help you to understand i can say something like this jdk is equal to okay tools plus something that is called jre now question is that what is jre jre contain something you can say like uh, jvm okay plus we can say something that is called uh, library okay so if we talk about jdk jdk consisting of tool plus jre while jre is consisting of jvm plus library okay so definitely i will understand i, I will i will discuss um, jvm in detail later on but library again i am saying what is library for example if i show you let me show you if you are going to eclipse id let's say we have created a hello world project last time so you can see here it is showing you something here jre system library so that is i am talking about so whenever you are running a project you need some jar files so what is jar file java archive file okay i will tell you later on how you can create your own jar file but definitely if we are running a java application we have some ready made classes given by java they are bundled into something that is called library and if we are running a java application we need that library okay i hope it makes sense so we talk about uh, jdk so jdk is a bundle of jre plus tools and tool consisting of uh, tool consisting of uh, what i told you for example compiler okay java p and all those things and we have a library i hope you have some decent idea what is jdk what is there in jdk what is there in jre and of course jvm will discuss in detail so please remember if you are a developer on your machine what what we need to install jdk and if you are a deployer machine if you are running on a server you don't need tools actually you need only what jvm plus library so that's why on deployer machine we only need jre on developer machine we need jdk okay so let me move to something more right so if you see here there's another thing which i mentioned here uh, okay how to write a hello world application so if you see here we uh, have to understand one thing that java is a object oriented language okay so if we're talking about uh, uh, if we're talking about java we have to write every code into something that is called class let's say we can write here class demo 
okay and we have to write here public okay static void main okay so now question is that we have to really understand why it should be public why it should be static void main and as i told you you can always explore on stack overflow for more detailed discussion now we have to pass here string let's say argument s and this should be array okay this is the symbol of array in java and here i can write here system okay system dot out dot print ln okay and i can write here hi so this is a very simple you can say very nominal java program right this java program we can run with eclipse id also and with uh, with uh, cmd that means command line argument okay but we have to understand the concept first of all you should know that thing class is a keyword and what is the name of the class demo okay of course we can also write public if we want here then we have public static okay void main uh, by the way main is a method okay main is a method that is uh, declared by the compiler and defined from the user and main is the entry point of your code okay so you should have some question in your brain let's say if, if we name this program uh, from main to main 2 will it run okay it will compile but it will not run so again i'm saying we we need to do some kind of experimentation okay void means what this main should not return anything static is a modifier what is the meaning of static static means what if we are trying to call this method we don't need to create the object of demo class that's the meaning of static here and uh, in java word we have a string okay string is a class in java very important class and you see here string argument okay so i don't know whether if you have done c c++ in c c++ we have a concept of that is called uh, command line argument okay command line argument so if we are looking for command line argument in java we can support command line argument by using this parameter okay string argument by the way this is array okay this is the array symbol in java right and then we can have system here what is system system is a class in java right what is out see out is not a object right out is a predefined object of print string i will explain you uh, out is a object of print stream class okay and println is method available into that out object so i will show you everything i have just tried to explain you little bit about it so now let's say if we want to write a hello world how it looks like okay always remember one thing writing the code is more easier than understanding the code first time so this is the hello world which i have already written so if you see here so this is the uh, class here public class hello so if you see here what i can write here public okay public static void main okay and i can write here string argument s right and uh, we can write here system dot out okay so you can see here out is automatically popped up that is the advantage of eclipse right if you are writing on notepad your performance is going to be slow down and eclipse will do auto suggestion so you can do very easily so i can say a system dot out dot print okay ln if i want to print in a new line okay so i can write here hello to not else hello to java right so this is what very simple code i have written how to run it you can directly say right click here run as run as a java application save it and you can run it you can see the output here now question is that uh, whenever we are typing it right so let's say what happen if i name this method not not as main but main2 will it run you see here clearly it is compiling how what is the proof that it is compiling if you don't see any syntactical error in eclipse id let's say if i misspell class then what happen will it compile no of course it is not compiling that means there is a compilation error with the code so if the code is compiling that means your bytecode was created and now stupidly i have changed uh, the spelling of main from uh, main to main2 let's say what happen if i run it okay so now you see here uh, the uh, the option of running as a java program is not coming that means your uh, your uh, java command cannot run it because it is not recognized as a runnable unit so definitely you have to understand the name of method should be main and you can do more experimentation let's say what happen if i remove this parameter let's say if i remove this parameter will it work so when i was a developer 
one of my early manager told me whenever you are learning programming you have to play with the code so anyway so if you see here i'm not passing the string argument as and now my program is not running let's say if i go back here and do control z and save it and run it then what happened now again this option come back so definitely you can run only as a java program if you follow the nomenclature given by java a question is that can i change the spelling let's say if i'm not uh, uh, i'm not writing spelling as argument as i can write s here i can write any spelling so spelling of this array variable doesn't matter still it will run right i'm running it and let's say if you want to type it you don't have to be typist right uh, as i told you you have something that is called eclipse shortcut so i can write here main and control and space bar so as soon as i do control and space bar this options come to me and i can say enter and voila what happened you don't have to be typist okay for example if i want to write system out dot print line in eclipse i'm going to write only sys out sys out and say control and space bar again things comes here so hello to java right so this is very simple now let's say if we want to explore something on system class by the way system class is a class which is available in a special package that is called java dot lang okay so if you see my code okay so if you see my code what is there in my code you can see here i have not mentioned any package statement because there is a package java dot lang it is automatically imported let's say you want to see what about this out variable okay so what is out can you see here what is coming on my clip side out is a object of print stream okay it's saying java lang system dot out so let me check it out i can do control shift t okay what is the command my friend control shift t so if you type here system okay let me type here system so you can see here system uh, class is there in jdk and it is f can you see here small f f means what is a final class i don't worry if you don't know about what is final class i will explore it later on so if i double click it uh, you can see here the coding of system class open in front of you so you can see here uh, okay uh, by the way this is there since beginning of java jdk 1.0 and uh, you can see here there are so much code available into that class let me let me make it a little bigger so you can see here uh, these 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 things uh, i wish that if you if you start doing some java coding and after uh, some experience you should be able to make uh, a sense of this code right so there are there's lots of code written into that class system class you can also do here a uh, quick outline so if you see here quick outline it can tell you what are the main method available into that system class okay so there are so many method like uh, we have a method like uh, gc so gc is also available into system class there are so many important method are available i will tell you later on how to use it but now i was interested to show you something here a uh, public final static input stream okay in is there now out is there so important thing is that many people ask this fresher question and they are confused what they answer that out is a object of system no 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 out is not a object of system out is a object of what out is a object of print stream okay so system class have a static variable of print stream if you see here now i am raising lots of wizard word for you static and all those thing don't worry here i will i will i will explain you everything in due course so if you see here let me uh, short it out system is a class out is a object of print stream and print stream class i can also open print stream class like this control shift t okay let's say control shift t and say here print print stream okay so if you see here print stream class is there and uh, if you say here quick outline you can have method here that is uh, print ln okay where is that okay so you can have different print ln method which some print character some print int and you also have print boolean so let me let me show you here something like this so this is the method which we were using i hope we are able to dissect what is the meaning of system dot out dot print ln okay by the way this is hello world for us okay so let me move little bit beyond hello world okay i hope you have understood something and don't worry jvm i will discuss in detail in new uh, in next session so let me start with this thing right so just a minute yeah 
so it's there okay so let me discuss something uh, what you might already aware uh, if no let me do that uh, there's something called procedural programming okay what is procedural programming in fact there are two words okay one is called procedural okay there's another programming that is called structural programming okay the procedure programming and structure programming is almost same thing the only difference is that in structural programming we have a guidelines that don't use a keyword that is called go to and this is your assignment to find out what is the go to keyword if you don't know okay so go to keyword is not considered as a good programming practice and uh, what we have understood that in procedure programming if you are using go to the flow of application become little unpredictable that's why what we assume if we are using structural programming we suppose not to use go to so we can say here uh, we can also say like this structure programming is equal to procedural programming minus go to okay and this is your assignment you have to search what is go to if you don't know okay so now question is that if we are looking for procedural programming what we should do in procedural programming like i hope if you know something that there was a c programming that was considered as a procedural programming and in procedural programming we have something that is called methods okay we know if you know we are supposed to write something let's say main okay okay we can write int main or void main in c programming and let's say if we want to write a calculator we have to say something like this let's say int is a data type let's say we are writing a b and c right and we can see here say here c is equal to sum a comma b okay and definitely we have to define a method let's say int uh, sum which is taking something like this int a int b and we are going to say return return a plus b so by the way these are the normal programming which we have used in c programming a long back if you have ever done c programming these are called procedural programming so of course java is not procedural programming but of course java is a object oriented programming in which you can do these procedural stuff okay so let me start doing some basic stuff with c uh, sorry with java let's see how we can do this let me create another program let's say we want to say it calculator app okay one thing you have to notice if i'm writing the name of class i'm following something that is called coding convention okay so if you notice here what is the name of class i'm giving here i'm giving here calculator app and c is capital and a is again capital let's say what happen if i'm not capitalizing it i'm simply writing like this what do you think so readability is good or readability is bad so if you see here if i don't know if i if i don't tell you what is the meaning of this you cannot spell it out correctly that's why we have to follow something that is called coding convention okay so one of the coding convention about the class is that the name of class should start from capital and let's say if i'm saying calculator app so i have to stop on another word that is called app so a should also be capital so that readability improved we can also say like this calculator application test okay in that case t should also be capital okay this is how we should define uh, or we should design the name of the class right now question is that what do we want to do okay we want to write main i hope you remember the shortcut okay control space enter okay so if you do these things you can very easily uh, create this public static void main you don't have to be typist okay so i wanted to write a program to some two number let's say if i can say here int a int b int c okay and sum so by the way uh, even this is not a good programming practice whenever you are defining the name of variable they should be self sufficient rather than writing the a you can say here let's say first number right you can say here second number okay and you can say here result so uh, the name of variable should be explicit so that it is a good programming practice uh, so that the programmer don't have to write comments writing unnecessary comment is not preferable nowadays right we should never write unnecessary comment right so we have created first number second number and result let's say what i am saying here first number let's say is equal to 55 i'm saying second number is equal to let's say 33 so what i can say here result result is equal to let's say first number 
okay plus what second number right so i can i can print it out let's say if i want to print the result i can say here sys out sys out result okay so if i want to print some constant i have to use this double quotes okay double quotes so i can say here result result equal to and if i want to catenate a string i have to use plus can you see here plus okay and i can say here result so let me run it you can also run program from here or from here it's your choice so if i'm running it so what is coming here result 88 is coming but actually uh, this is not a very modular code right okay so if you see uh, this screen here uh, what you will find here even this code was more modular i have defined a method that is called sum and the flow of control was transferred from main to this method and once this method finished the control come back to the main so basically this is called uh, 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 this is more uh, uh, you can say a kind of uh, modular programming in which we are defining our main into multiple method and we have a multiple methods calling happening and we are not writing whole code in the main otherwise what is going to happen let's say right now i'm just simply adding two number then i have to subtract then i have to multiply then i have to divide definitely if i'm writing everything into this code my main becomes so big and it become unmanageable code i hope you understand so we have to create small small method so that program is more modular okay. modularity simply means that your method should be divided into multiple calls okay so definitely it doesn't look nice so what i should do here uh, i can call a method like this okay i i want to replace this i don't want to have this so i can have here add add two number okay so i'm i'm passing here first number let's say i'm passing first number second number so you can again use control space okay to auto uh, populate these value now definitely i have not defined this method okay there's no method that is called add two number so i can double click this guy eclipse is very handy tool you can double click it and eclipse will suggest you what you want to do okay so let's say i'm asking eclipse hey eclipse i want to create a method now if you see here this method is also static method okay you can remove this private but of course i will spend some time with you people and uh, don't worry i will explain you why this also is to be static but let's say if i remove static right now will it work okay it's not working so i need to come back later on why it should be static okay uh, by that time uh, please just uh, leave it okay so we can say here first number so i am i'm little lazy and i don't want to like typing so i can say here first number second number okay so if if you see here if i run it what is going to happen the response would be same but my code is little modular so now i have added two number all right okay i can also have something here okay let's say if i want to de define another method that is called what uh subtract two number now i need to define a method let's say create now it's giving me uh, this choice create method subtract two number so here i can write some code i can remove private okay so i can say here first number minus minus second number so uh, this is by the way you can write here let's say if i says out here in between right so now result of addition or uh, let's say add result of what subtract right now let's say if i run it what should happen of course if we do minus 55 minus 33 should be 22 so sound okay let's say if we want to do something more i wanted to multiply two numbers so these are some basic procedure stuff if you don't know uh, let's say that is uh, the name of method should be multiplication right now i want to multiply those two number of course i have to define a new method so you can understand this is what our uh, procedure programming okay so till now we are not doing much object oriented programming initially we should able to uh, uh, be good into that right okay so multiplication for multiplication i can write here second number right now let's say if i make it here multiplication of course it should also work now let's say we also wanted to do divide right for division let's say we copy paste this code here uh, let's say what i'm saying here 
division of two number okay of course this method is still not there so what i'm going to do here i'm going to create another method that is called what division of two number and uh, here uh, some funny things can start right let's say we have first number divided by what second number so what's the funny thing can happen here uh, let's say uh, we are dividing two number and what happen if the second number is zero okay so if you run it what is going to happen you get a special error here that is called arithmetic exception of course if you uh, know like elementary math because you are already aware of all these things so if you're dividing a number by zero of course we have divide by zero and now question is that how to handle this exception so of course exception handling is a wonderful topic uh, till now we are not doing it but i will tell you later on how you can do it till now you can simply say if number second number equal to zero let's say if if second number is equal to zero then what you can say here sys out okay you cannot divide right and you can say here something called else okay in else you can have this code right so let me uh, this is not multiplication this is division okay so if i try to run it it's running very fine right sorry you cannot divide the number let's say if we have something else let's say if i'm writing five if i'm running it what's what's going to happen it's working right so i hope this is very simple and nothing special this is procedure stuff if you have not done i'm just trying trying to tell you how you can do it but there's a more important thing right we, we are trying to discuss something about procedure stuff right now another thing uh, which we should know uh, we have used a little bit on if else but there's something very uh, very interesting that is called looping okay so what is loop right if you see here let's say uh, what is my requirement let's say what is my requirement i wanted to print something like this okay let's say i wanted to make right so what is the meaning here i wanted to print five rows of stars and every row contain five stars so i can say here how many columns i have five and how many rows we have five right so how many stars are there five into five right one thing you should never forget that programming okay programming is a branch of what maths right so if you are good in maths of course you can learn programming very easily if you uh, focus a little bit so by the way we want to print these uh, five star five into five star so what i can do here right or let's say if you start with a very 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 basic question not even with this question let's say if i want to print five star okay let's say you're doing good in your assignment i am giving you five star so uh, what is the way to print five star okay let's say if you see here right okay so let's say if we wanted to print five star what is the approach should i say something like this says out uh this thing this is very silly right i have to print five star of course it will work it is printing five star but let's say if i have to say five thousand star as i'm going to print uh, like this five thousand star this is the height of stupidity we cannot do like this okay so let's say if i want to print five star i can use something that is called loops okay so i can say here uh for okay for is a loop okay while is a loop do while is a loop okay if you see here we have to give something here and i is equal to zero what is i i is a variable you can say this is uh this is uh initialization of the loop right so you say start i is equal to zero you can say here, i less than five okay and then you can say here i plus plus right so if if you see here if i run it what is going to happen it is printing five star but it is printing in a column right we don't want to print it if you don't want to print like this you can remove ln ln stand for new line okay so if i remove it if i run it what is going to happen it is printing five star like this okay makes sense but if you see here uh, this is very simple right but actually uh, there is a great technique which i learned in my childhood when i was doing programming when i have learned programming initially in my life and uh, let me explain you let's say this is my code so what i'm going to explain you uh, there is a great technique that is called dry run okay what that technique is called dry run that means 
running program in your brain. Last day also, I was telling you somewhere, the most important portion of our body is what? What, what is the most important thing in our body? Okay. So basically, dry run is actually is a technique of running the code in your brain. So let me start that using this technique, right? So if you see here, uh, in this typical for loop, okay, what happened? So, so if you see here, in this loop, we have three variables, okay? Int i is equal to zero, i less than five, i plus plus. So if you see here, we can make something like this. I can make a two dimension uh, or a diagram like this. I can say i, okay? So if, if I say i is equal to zero, and let's say this condition is there, i less than five. So what do you think? So five is greater than zero. Condition is what? True. Okay, so if condition is true, how many stars should be printed? One, right? And there's no new line. So what is going to happen after printing the star? Okay, the control flow again back, go back to the loop, right? The, it is the meaning of looping. Looping means what? Until the condition is not filled. By the way, this middle one is condition. So initially I was zero. Okay, I less than five, zero less than five condition was true. So a star was printed, V goes up and then I plus plus. This is called increment. Okay, uh, many people are confused between post increment, pre increment. Don't worry, I will explain you. Uh, by the way, here it doesn't matter. Even if you say plus plus i, it, the meaning would be same. So I'm saying here i plus plus. So i become what? One. Now we are comparing five is greater than one. Condition is still true. Okay. So a star is going to be printed. Again, we go up. Then i become what? Two. Five is greater than two. Condition is true. I become what? Three. Five is greater than three. Condition is true. Right. Then we go up. I become four. Four is greater than five is greater than four condition is true then we go up i become five now i'm now i'm saying five is greater than five which is false so that means my loop is broken and i come out of the loop okay definitely there should be a terminal com condition in the loop if you don't have terminal condition in a loop your loop may become infinite loop okay so infinite loop means what which never ending loop for example if you say something like this okay let's say if i'm saying i is equal to okay zero or uh, let's say five equal to five so if i say some some silly code like this my loop will never end or let's say if i'm writing like this while one okay so or let's say while true okay so if we are writing such kind of loop that is a infinite loop okay so we, we understand how to print this uh, star like this now question is that we wanted to print five into five stars. So what should be the approach? Okay, so whenever you are writing the code, right? One thing is that there's an, another interesting thing you should know that is called intentation of the code, right? Never write code like this. We are not writing a poem, okay? We are writing the code. This is very unreadable code, unprofessional code. So you should never accept code like this, okay? So whenever you find code like this, there's a command which you can use here, control shift F, okay? What is the command? Let me write it here. Control shift F, F for format. So if you press this combination, your code was formatted. Let's say this is what the initially, if I do control shift F, my code is format, formatted. Okay, so the, the, the formatting of code is very important. You should have flow like this. So what I can do here, I can say here for, okay, int J is equal to zero. Okay, J is less than, less than five and j plus plus so what i can say i can say something like this so in this case i can write here says out star okay but i don't have to press ln here okay let me write here says out so if you see here this is the code i have written here but believe me i have not uh, mug up this code i have to do dry run of this code see dry run of the code is very important let me try to run it and see what is the output it is producing? Okay, so it was producing something like this, which I have asked you. We want to print five into five star. Now, uh, question is that how it is doing, right? So let me do one thing. I must do a dry run. Okay, so how I can do dry run for you? Let's say if I come in here. Right, let me paste it here. So now, I wanted to do dry run of this code. So if you see here, this is the initialization condition. Okay, this is the 
comparison condition and this is increment or decrement so of course the flow has to be started from innermost loop okay so the control started from here now i'm saying i is equal to 0 and uh, 5 is greater than 0 if you see here 5 is greater than 0 condition is true so v goes into this loop now again what i'm saying j is equal to 0 and uh, 5 is greater than 0 condition is true and i'm saying star right so if i print one star the flow doesn't go to the outer loop it still goes into the inner loop right you, you should understand this thing until unless this inner loop is failed there's no chance that an outer loop can come back right until unless we are writing something called that is called break i will explain you what is the meaning of break break means what uh, coming out of the loop uh, depending on some condition right so what i'm writing here i'm writing a star here now i'm going up here and now what is going to happen j become what j initially was 0 j plus plus j become 1 now i'm saying 5 is greater than 1 condition is true i'm printing a star right now i go back now i'm saying uh, j become 2 5 is greater than 2 then 5 is greater than 3 5 is greater than 4 now i'm saying 5 is greater than 5 see, see as soon as i say 5 greater than 5 this condition fail and we come out of the loop right but we are still in inner loop right so what is going to happen after that system out dot print alarm. okay so we are printing a new line so cursor was blinking here so cursor start blinking here now now i i will go up and this time i become one now i'm saying five is greater than five is greater than one condition is still true so again this loop execute five times one two three four five again we go up then five five greater than two then five is greater than greater than three five is greater than four and then five greater than five it will be failed so basically how many rows are going to be printed one two three four five so of course if you if you see here what i'm doing i'm doing nothing but school mathematics so this is very essential uh, what i can suggest to you right now uh, last time also i was requesting you to refer this ntu edu.sg and you can find tons of exercise like this exercise of flow control like check whether a student was pass or fail let's say if a student have more than 49 percent he's passed otherwise he's failed let's say we wanted to write a program to check even and odd so this is nothing but a branch of mathematics programming is very simple if you think in this way right uh, so what we are going to do so he's not writing the code he's writing the skeleton code and it's a very good exercise for you you don't have to see assignment from my side initially let me solve it for you so what i can do here let's say even or odd okay so this is the program title so let me start here okay so now if you see here uh, there is another interesting thing if you don't know there is a call scanner okay what is the use of scanner scanner class is used to take input from the user so i can say here new scanner and i need to pass here system dot in so if you don't know uh, how this code is working there's an important topic which we'll discuss in detail later on that is called decorator design pattern okay so don't worry you have to wait for a few more days i will cover design pattern uh, in detail with you people at that time you come to know what i'm trying to convey to you so there's a topic that is called design pattern so whenever we are talking about io like let's say a uh, scanner scanner is equal to new scanner system dot in it's a very practical application of something that's called decorator design pattern anyway forget about decorator right now it's a way to take way to get input from user okay because i want to take some number from the user so that i can decide whether say even or odd so i can write here please enter a number so what is going to happen i need to say here end number is equal to scanner dot next end you see here uh, because i'm receiving an teaser it should be next end okay if i'm looking for double it could be next double okay so i can say like this we have received the number now i can say here what if number okay what is even number okay so very simple if if some number is divisible by two it is called even number otherwise it is called odd number so we have to take remainder operator here you forget you you, you don't have to forget that you should apply double equal to not single equal to okay right so you can say here uh, sys out sys out number number is what i should say even 
okay else okay it's this out this out number is odd one important thing is that again indentation is very important right can you see here this code how i'm writing this code let me show you right. so if you see this code there's a, a very interesting thing i should tell you right so whenever you are writing the code right you should not write code in a straight line like this okay you should never write code like this you have to be you have to write code like this so that readability increase so that if somebody is seeing this code he can understand if this condition true i'm going to do else okay if this is condition i'm going to do okay what what is going to happen if i write this code not in this way but let's say in this way what is going to happen right so of course even if you write this code this will compile but of course this is not a readable code so you you can always take the help of your uh, eclipse id you can always say control shift f it will format for your code you have not to do any hard work it's so simple let me try to run this code important you see here i have used a scanner what is the scanner used to take value from the user so if i run it can you see here this time this time you can see here some red icon here it means that my id is waiting for my input let's say if i enter some input let's say if i'm writing 5 here what is coming here number is odd let's say if i and you see here now it stopped okay uh, this stopped so i have to run this program again let's say what happen if i enter here 68 it is what okay so if i'm writing 68 it is saying it is even let's say what happen if i'm writing some wrong data let's say i'm writing my name okay what is going to happen what is your expectation you see here as soon as i enter some invalid data some runtime exception is coming to me that is called input mismatch exception so uh, by the way this program is very poor right now i am not handling exceptions here but definitely i will teach you later on how to make this program much better okay right so exception handling can be used to improve robustness in your code that i will prove you later on but at least we can change the design of this code a little bit right this is not very good uh, what i'm going to do here i don't want to write something like this okay i want to refactor this code see eclipse have a very good id uh, features that is called refactoring okay do you know this word refactoring okay refactoring refactoring is a very important word what is the meaning of refactoring let me explain you refactoring means what improving design of code without breaking breaking the code okay that means you want to improve the design of the code but code should still work right so if you see here this is not good we should write a separate method here right this is not a good thing so what i can do here uh, i can say here extract method right i can write extract method and uh, method name let's say if i write here check prime okay so i can write something like this so see here it's very easy now we have refactor our code rather than writing that code here uh, we have defined a method check prime which should work right it is asking me to enter a number let's say if i am entering 5 okay what is going to happen it is showing me the odd right so so see result is same but actually this is more better programming so what is my expectation from you guys uh, you please go through this lab exercise take this as a lab exercise and do it honestly right it will help you out right if there is any doubt uh, in next session definitely i am going to help you so let me show you some more example right it will help you as if you do more and more exercise you will learn more uh, this is what my thought process so let's say this time i am going to print this this kind of diagram right these are called programming fundamental if your programming fundamental are strong you can learn any framework right frameworks are not difficult programming fundamental are essential so if you see here what i can say about this diagram okay so if we see here first row second third fourth fifth so as soon as my rows are increasing my number of star are also increasing this is 1 2 3 4 and 
right? So what is the logic I'm applying here? Let me show you. So what is my expectation? I'm quickly showing you some example. And uh, after my session, you have to try one thing that is called dry run, okay, which I explained you. Okay, let's say if we have a code here, print star. So what I can do here, I can write here main and now again, I can say here, and I is equal to zero, I less than what I should say, five, I plus plus, right? And I can say here further, and J is equal to zero, five, J plus plus. So what I should write here, here? what I should write? Okay, this is not a good code. Okay, if you do something like this, it will print the square rec uh, which we have done earlier. Let me do that. This out. What I should write here, star. And uh, it should be in double quotes, right? This is a string constant, string literal. It should be in double quotes. Literal means constant, okay? So we see here, I can also write here, sys out, right? So if I run it, it will print as usual, which we have seen earlier. But this time I wanted to print a triangle, not this whole shape, right? So I have to apply mathematics here. Right, so what I can do here, I can simply say equal to i. Okay, so let me try to run it. So what is happening here? It is printing that stars, okay? Now, there are multiple way of doing the same thing. Let's say if you want to start a loop from one, okay, you can also do that. Okay, in that case, you have to apply equal here. Right, so what is my expectation? That you should do a dry run on all these examples and uh, try to understand it. Okay, Next, quickly, uh, I can give you some other example. Let's say we want to print something like this. Okay. So if you see here, uh, again, uh, this is very simple mathematics. Okay, how many star? One, three, five, and seven and nine. I hope in mathematics, you must know something that is called arithmetic progression and geometrical progression. So if you if you are aware, this is nothing but arithmetical progression, okay? Because we have a series one, three, five, seven, nine. So it is a hint for you. Please take this hint and try to solve this problem, okay? Of course, on Google, you can also find the code. See, again, I'm saying a uh, copy paste of code is not a crime, but copy paste without understanding code is a crime. So what is my expectation? Even if you're trying some code from Google, first you should do what? Dry run, okay? So you should do dry run before doing some copy paste of the code. Okay, so these, these things are assignment for you. Uh, there is some more type of question. Let me quickly help you out. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, this is a very good question. I hope uh, it will help you to uh, wind up the class and then I hope you will revise those things and come back in the next session. Okay, let's say if we are looking for something that is called prime number checker. Okay, so what is the prime number? I don't have to explain you. Let's say if two is a prime number, three is a prime number, two is debatable, is two is prime number? I don't know. Anyway, two, three, five, seven, okay, these are the prime numbers. So what is prime number? Prime number is that number which is only divisible by either one or itself, okay? So if you see here, two is a prime number, three, five, seven. So question is that if we want to calculate a prime, prime number, how we should go further? So what we should do here? So whenever we are writing such kind of code, we have to go uh, with something that is called algorithmic way. We have to go step by step. So what should be the first step? Okay, accept number from, from user. Okay, let's say user is entering x is equal to, let's say seven, right? Then what I'm gonna to do, step two. Step two, assume that, okay, assume that number is prime number. Okay, in geometry, I learned long back, there's a uh, approach that is called proof by contradiction. Okay, so first we assume that it is a prime number and then we'll try to prove it's not a prime number. Okay, so uh, step two, we can say that we are assuming that it's a prime number. So what I can do here, I can say here, I can apply some loop here. Let's say I wanted to continuously divide this number uh, from, 
okay if it is a prime number it should not be divisible from 2 to 6 right it should be able to divisible only from 1 and itself but not in between numbers so what i'm going to do here i is equal to 2 i less than let's say x and i plus plus right now what i'm going to do here if okay we can apply some if here now i'm saying if x mod 2 x mod i sorry okay let me x mod i is equal to 0 okay so if x mod i equal to 0 that means that means our, our assumption was wrong initially what we have assumed that it's a number of number is a prime number but if it is dividing in between what i can say our assumption is our assumption is wrong it is not a prime number okay it's not a prime number and we can break from the loop right now further on i can check what is the value so rather than explaining like this let me show you the program but i hope you have understood the gist of algorithm how we should write it okay in your college days i think you must have a subject uh, design and analysis of algorithm okay but it's a very simple example demo prime right so uh, what is expected from here So again, uh, what is the first step? I'm gonna to take input from the user scanner is equal to new scanner. Okay, you can say system. So what is happening? Mm, my keyboard. System dot in. I can say something like this. And then what I can do here, okay, so uh, we are going to take scanner, then what I'm going to do here, uh, let's say we have int value, right, so we can say here, scanner, scanner dot what, next int, okay, so what I'm going to do here, uh, I can say here, boolean is prime, let's say initially I'm assuming that my number is a prime number, so that's why I'm saying, boolean is prime is equal to true so what i'm going to do here for and i is equal to two okay i less than i less than what i should say here well and i plus plus okay so what i can do here if if let's say uh what i should say well mod i double equal to zero what it means if it is divis divisible that means our assumption was wrong and what I'm saying is prime is prime is equal to false, right? And if it is false, why hell we are moving in the loop? We should able to do break break from the loop. Okay, so this is the code here. So what I can do here, this is something like this. So what is we can do here further? If what is prime is prime? Okay, so uh, so what what we can write here? This is our it's a prime number right and uh, I can write here as says out it's not a prime number right so uh, let me try to run it it's very simple code right so what is happening here it is waiting for my input let's say if I'm writing four it's not a prime number let's say we are writing seven it's a prime number but actually this code is again not very uh, smooth code uh, I don't want to write code like this, right? Uh, in fact, I want to uh, I want to put all these things into some method call. So I can I can do something like this. Uh, is prime number okay? And what I'm gonna do pass here? I'm gonna do pass here value because we want to make our code more modular, right? So I can define a method like this, right? And I can remove this private. And what I can do here, I can cut this code and paste here. We just let me paste it here, and uh, I can return here this prime. So this is a better code, right? Uh, Control Shift F is always there. It's your friend. So if I try to run it, uh, okay. So we can say here, says out. Please enter. A value, right? So this is the code. So if I run it, what is going to happen? So, uh, okay. So 
but it's not asking me value to enter a value let's say if i'm entering five okay that's the prime number okay i did a silly thing say uh, the sys out should be there before asking a value So now let me try to run it and it's asking me print please enter a value i'm writing five it's not a prime number okay let's say if we are uh, putting the value 77 it's not a prime number so i hope you understand right so now you can extend this program to something else let's say we want to find out prime number between Two given number. Let's say we have number x1 and x2. Let's say x1, uh, we have x1 is equal to let's say 44, and x2 is equal to let's say 69. So uh, you 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 can extend this program. Uh, just think how you can do this work. And uh, if you don't understand, uh, come back to me. I will help you out. So uh, I hope uh, this session was useful to you guys. Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So let me recap what we have done. Right. So revision is very important. I request you to do some assignment which I shared with you. Right. We have understood what is Java. Okay. Right. What is the difference between uh, JDK and JRE? Definitely JVM, I will discuss in detail later on with you people. Then I have discussed that there's something called procedural programming, right? I've explained you something that is called a very important technique as per my understanding that today most important topic was dry run, right? That means how to run code in brain, right? Then we discuss some uh, basic stuff, right? Any question till now? No question. Okay, so things was understandable? Yes. Okay, so uh, if you if you uh, looking for this code, I will do one thing, I will bundle this code and share with you people, right? Yeah. Okay, and by the way, uh, this is assignment for you, right? If you see here, uh, this is uh, coming from the site which I've shown you last time also. If you, if you have forget, uh, let me tell you again. You can search here yet another programming insignificant notes right so if you search here you will find that link open that link okay and you can go there directly to exercise java basics right so this is the exercise we supposed to do okay he has done the code skeleton right you can even copy paste this code skeleton right but you have to write some suitable code here let's say what what are you gonna do write in if okay so like print number in words right so these, these are some simple assignment if you apply your brain they are quite uh, simple as per my understanding this is a mathematical equations in mathematics you must have done some harmonic sum or something like this okay any question my friend mm, no. okay so uh, so let me uh, set the agenda for the next day For the next day, uh, our focus would be, okay, uh, let me let me tell you what is our focus. We are going to learn some basics of, oops, right? We do something which is very important, abstraction, encapsulation, modularity, and hierarchy, okay? And then we discuss something about class, object, constructor, Okay, init method, static, static method, right? And uh, something, uh, what I should say here, uh, some basics, examples, right? Uh, initially, what I thought of that uh, 40 session would be enough, but uh, as per my understanding, I've calculated again, our session may be more than 50 because you people are uh, starting gradually and i want that your base and basic fundamental should be strong 
so i think session might be around 50 or maybe a little bit more than 50 but it's not going to be less than 50 is that uh, is that okay to you guys yeah yeah because i don't want to rush actually i want that your basic fundamentals should be strong so that you can learn anything in uh, any programming and once your basic fundamental is clear whether you learning java python or scala it doesn't matter okay because there are so many programming language but basic fundamental always remains same so uh, what i request you uh, what you should take away from this session if uh, i am able to uh, clearly indicate to you you should able to understand dry run okay you should able to uh, not copy paste the program simply you should always try to think how this program is running and initially if you are not uh, experienced you can uh, do dry run on a copy right and once you get experience you can do dry run in your brain right there's a great exercise i can suggest you uh, in this class right guys any difficulty any doubt which i can discuss right now with you before i wind up yeah i have one doubt yeah please please tell me yeah in prime number programming there you if is prime you didn't take any condition like is prime equal to true or false You see, here, uh -huh. you see here this is the code which you are talking about right yeah so we have put if here right yeah before that program maybe before the on the method see uh, what i am doing uh, let me do control z so that you should able to understand what initially i did my whole code was there here only right okay so this is the whole code right uh, what is that is prime so if you see here this is the code uh, if you don't understand it let me do one thing let me do dry run of this code your your doubt is how this code is working isn't it yeah exactly okay just a wait uh, i let me copy uh, this thing here on my screen uh, okay so this is the code example i wanted to do dry run in front of you and uh, i hope it will helpful right yeah Okay, so how to get started, right? Let's say this is the code you copy pasted from somewhere in the Google. Okay, now you are wondering how it's working. So what is the great technique you have? Dry run. Right, great. Okay, good. So if you see here, uh, what I'm saying, scanner dot next end. Let's say somebody is going to enter. Uh, let's say what I should say, eleven. Let's say eleven is the input done by the user. I hope you remember, scanner is used to take value from the user, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So now what I'm assuming, I told you this is a technique of mathematics. That technique is called proof by contradiction. Okay. So what is the contradiction I'm assuming? I don't know whether it's a prime number or not. I blindly assume it is a prime number. Okay. Now what I'm doing, I'm running this code from two to well. Okay. So you see here, what is the initial value I have considered here? Eleven. I want to check eleven. I know this number is going to be divisible by one by one and eleven. I want to check whether this number is divisible between two to ten or not. If it is divisible between two to ten, my assumption is going to be wrong. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. So what I am starting here, int i is equal to two, i less than well. If you see here, i less than well will not go up to eleven. Okay. What is the well here initially? Eleven. So I at the most go up to ten. Okay. So if you see here, I'm going to check between two to ten. Okay. So two, three, four, five, six, and so on up to ten. So if this number is not divisible by up to ten, I can safely say it is a prime number. So now let me move in a loop. Okay. So let me check it. Take another color. So what I'm saying, i is equal to two. So initially i is equal to two. and uh, i'm saying well that means 11 is great, greater than let's say 2 condition is true now if condition is true i'm coming here if well mod i what is mod mod give you remainder right yeah. so what is what is well well is 11 11 mod initially it was 2 so if i do 11 mod 2 it is not 0 it is 1 actually now i'm saying 1 equal to 0 this condition was false so now i go back in the loop this time i become 3 okay now i'm saying 11 mod 3 So now, if I do eleven mod three, it is actually not zero; it is two. Okay, it is two. Again, I am checking two equal to zero. Again, my condition was false. So again, I am going back. So there was no chance actually between 
2 to 10, I never go inside this if if block. Okay? I never go inside this if block. Are you are you understanding my point? Uh, yes, sir. Right. So we are not never going into this if block. So if we are never going into the this if block, okay, the is prime was initially considered true and it will remain true. Let me take another question. It will help you. Let's say we are taking something, let's say what I should say. Okay. Uh, a, uh, 10 or let's say 9 because 9 9 would be better example I will tell you why so if we consider 9 here so what is happening in the 9 what is your initial value i is equal to 2 and I wanted to check between 2 to 2 to 8 isn't it yes okay because I'm very sure it will always be divisible by 1 and itself right so I need to check between 2 to 8 so initially my assumption was blindly that let's say it's a prime number Okay, I hope you are very sure what is the meaning of proof by contradiction. And uh, I suggest you uh, that you should Google uh, and I will tell you a very good book if you want to improve your logic. But I suspect if I tell you more books, you will run away from me. <laughs> is it? Yeah. So I don't tell you more books actually, sorry for that. But uh, but actually, you 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 uh, is that uh, dry run is new to you or you have already done in your, uh, in your no, life? No, I know that. Okay, that's great. That's great. So if you see here, I wanted to check between 2 to 8. So what is going to happen now? Now we are checking here. What is the number here? 9 mod 2. So if I do 9 mod 2, the answer would be 1, not the 0. So of course, this condition was failed. Now we are going back. I become 3. But this time, 9 mod 3 becomes 0. So now we are doing comparison between 0 equal to 0. And the condition was true. If condition was true, and my assumption was wrong and is prime become what false so as soon as is is prime become false there's no point checking further on that's why i do a break statement here i hope you understand what is the purpose of this break yeah because we don't want to waste our computation right because cpu is important right cpu cycle is important so as soon as we found that it is not prime why hell i should waste my time so it's not a prime number i break and i come out from the loop and here i'm checking if is prime so initially is prime was true, but in this example, it was false. So if if false never execute, then control come to else and it will print it is not a prime number. I hope this explanation helped you. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, um, so uh, what is the uh, uh, request? Again, I'm requesting again and again. Please go through this lab exercise. It's up. It's for you. There are some challenging questions. You don't have to do all the questions. Just take it taste of this exercise that what is expected from these exercise and I hope because you need scanner that's why I've told already told you scanner in advance right if you want to take a double rather than saying next end you can say next double okay right yes okay so uh, so what is the uh, other exercise what I can request you this is the another page which I request you to use on. Uh, that is what oops basic. So uh, friends, if you have never done object oriented programming, even in your life, I, I, I request you if you go through these notes, they're very easily written by someone, I should praise him. Okay, he has make my job very easy. But otherwise, I will share my own notes also, but you can go through it. It's beautifully explained. By the way, if you don't know, this is called class diagram. Okay. You know a little bit about UML diagram, friends? Yes. Okay, great, great. If you know a little bit on UML diagram, my job becomes a little easy, frankly speaking. So uh, so this is, you just go through it, whether you understand it or not, it, it doesn't matter. Just go through it. It will make my life easy uh, while explaining to you people and you're, you will grasp a little faster. Okay, so bye for now. Bye. So you have any question before uh, we wind up? Again, I'm asking. Everybody's, everybody's clear with the concepts. Uh, I just have one question. Yeah, please. Uh, do you have to write this uh, keyword is prime? Can you write if it is, is true or something? Is prime? Uh, see, uh, friend, is prime is not a variable. It, uh, it's not a keyword. It's a variable. Okay. Its spelling could be anything, right? The spelling should be logical. If you see here, the it should spelling be understood should... by air, it should be understood by the computer, something like that. See, uh, what I'm saying, uh, if we are writing, let's say, rather than writing this prime spelling, I'm writing spelling foo. 
even this will compile right just try to understand you have asked a very good question if you understand they are very si simple to understand by the way so can you tell me foo make some sense in this code or not tell me foo looks nonsense spelling here right so this just is spelling right it's not a keyword keyword is boolean is a key what we using pardon we need to follow what we are using this part boolean is actually a data type and foo is the variable name but what i am saying you that foo variable name is not a senseful name let's say this is the code i have written and i share with you but rather than foo if you are seeing the spelling is prime you make a better sense right yes. okay is 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 actually making asking a question is it a prime or is it not a prime so is is actually a question so whenever you want to ask a question from a variable you mention a is before that variable name and you see this is a coding convention in next session today we have to wind up actually i am having another job right now so if you see here if we write here is prime actually we are following some coding convention okay so i can guide you here if you see here coding convention in java so if you search here stack overflow uh, you can find here right so there may be uh, some list here or uh, let me find out like this rather than stack overflow i can find some pdf so if you find some pdf you can uh, get some coding convention which is mentioned from oracle okay so it's a pdf you just go through it you don't have to do any mug up right just go through it what is the coding convention given by oracle in next session i will take some 10 minute to explain you it's not very difficult topic it's just a good programming practice last day also i was explaining you anybody every anybody can write the code but we don't we we are not anybody we are a good coder isn't it yes yes okay so we are a good coder so we have to write some good programming practice initially it will looking let like, okay it's a looking like a painful exercise but uh, it is my promise gradually if you follow this practice you would be a better coder whether you are in india or us it doesn't matter okay yes okay so so bye for now i think uh, thing goes fine if you have any other question you can also post me um, i will share my uh, details to you people